What is going on guys and welcome back to another Lost Bits video here on Tetrabit Gaming, the series where I explore noteworthy, hidden, unseen, and unused content in gaming. For this Lost Bits video I will be going over the Super Mario main series gem on the Nintendo GameCube Super Mario Sunshine. As always, before we begin, if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more like it in the future, please be sure to slap a like or comment down below, and with that said, let's begin exploring. So while doing a little bit of research, I stumbled upon a screenshot of the beta for the game, and in it, it appears that normal humans were initially planned to have been in the game as characters, potentially instead of Piantas. There is however one human character left in the game, known as Il Piantissimo, who uses a Pianta disguise and challenges Mario to several foot races throughout the game. Furthermore, and interestingly enough, by removing Il Piantissimo's mask, it is revealed that this character used a face model which has a resemblance to the running man from Ocarina of Time. That would kind of make sense as they both enjoy running. Who knows? Maybe they're the same person. And next up, although it technically isn't a lost bit, I still think it's a pretty cool easter egg in the game. In the level Serena Beach, if you manage to climb up top of Hotel Delfino and look out towards the beach, you'll notice that everything in front of you is laid out like a GameCube controller, with the fire in the middle being the start button, the huts being the C-stick and the D-pad, and even the A, B, X, and Y buttons are all symbolized here. And that's really cool if you ask me. Next, we have a pretty well-known unused object in the game, with many rumors behind it. In the third episode of the level, Noki Bay, Red Coins in a Bottle, if instead of collecting the red coins you go exploring around the sandcastle type structure on the bottom, you will see an opening that leads to what appears to be a door, which unfortunately does not open. No matter, by playing around with the camera you can clip through and see a book behind this door. Like I said, there are many rumors about this book that I might save for a future mystery bit. The most likely theory about this book is that at some point in development, the original mission for this part was to collect the book, but obviously this was changed to the red coins in the full release for whatever reason. And finally, the main chorus lost bit of this episode, the Super Mario Sunshine test map. Very, very similar to the style of the test map in The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, albeit not as many, this game still has a really neat test map and without further delay, let's explore it. First thing you'll see when you spawn in the map is a big old Pianta. Let's go ask him what's up. Error message could not be loaded? Uh, hi to you too. <laughs> this is actually what any interactable object or character will say to you in the map, as they likely never got programmed to say anything else. And moving on, we have more typical test map things like areas to test jumping, wall jumping, climbing fences, slopes, and so on. There are also a few red coins and a shine sprite to, I guess, test collectability. And we also have a random fire that damages you and a poor strolling stew minding his own business, which I decided to kill anyway. There's also a pretty cool unused soccer ball object, which lets Mario recall his glory days in Super Mario Strikers. <laughs> In the corner of the test map, there is a mucked up Noki that hides a terrible secret. If you clean him up with Flood, you'll notice that there is no torso and shell. Could it be that he's... a ghost? And lastly, but certainly not least, is what some say is the main course of this test map, the unused Hinokuri enemy also known as Tramplin' Stew. For those unfamiliar, Tramplin' Stew is an enemy seen in the Space World 2001 beta trailer for the game who never actually made it to the final game. If you quickly run to this area over here, you will see Tramplin' Stew spawn and run by. But you have to be quick though, because after a few seconds he disappears into the level. Tramplin' Stew is actually really, really weird. In the original trailer, you will notice that he is wearing some sort of onion-shaped hat, but in this level he is completely bare, and he even has an eye at the top of his head. In my opinion, this is probably the weirdest unused thing in this game. And that's all the noteworthy, unused content that I was able to find in Super Mario Sunshine. If there's anything notable you know of that I might have missed, please let me know. I really hope you guys enjoyed this Lost Bits video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like or comment down below, it seriously helps me out a lot. But as always guys, thank you so so much for watching and for all your support, and I will see you in a bit.